What will other people think? Those five words have killed more dreams than any alarm clock. But the reality is, if you want to build life-changing wealth, you're going to have to do something differently than the majority of people because right now, the majority of people are broke. The majority of people are drowning in debt. And the majority of people have no hope to build wealth. And then when you start doing something different, they're going to think you lost your mind. But if you want to have life-changing wealth, you got to start by defining what is life-changing wealth for you. Is it $500,000? $5 million? $50 million? Let's assume that life-changing wealth for me is $5 million. And now let's work backwards. Let's assume that I'm making $50,000 a year right now. And I want to have $5 million worth of wealth because that would change my life and allow me to live a completely financially free life. Now, how am I going to go and get there? Well, assuming that I can go out and invest 15% of my income, that's $625 a month or $7,500 a year. And if I'm 30 years old today, that means maybe I'll have another 35 years to invest my money. That means there's $7,500 a year that I invest might grow to around two and a half million dollars, assuming that I get the historical average stock market return of around 10% a year which is not my life-changing wealth amount. Now you might say, well, just breathe over the next few decades, you're gonna get a few raises, and if you get a raise, you'll be able to invest more money, which is fine. But in reality here, there are three options that you have to get to this wealth-changing amount sooner rather than later. Option A, get a new job so you have more money to invest. Option B is you get a new career so you have more money to invest. Or option C is you do something different to earn some more money, that way you have more money to invest. Now what I can tell you as an employer is when I publish a job application, we're gonna get a number of applications. Now, we're not gonna pick the person who we think is gonna be the most average. We're not gonna pick the person who we think just wants to get by. We're gonna pick the person that we believe is the most driven, who we think is going to produce the most success, who we believe is the most passionate, who we believe is going to come in and they're going to have a drive to want to succeed. And if you're coming in just wanting to get by, you're not going to be the person who's going to get the biggest raises. You're not going to be the person who's going to get the biggest promotions. You're not going to be the person that's going to land the top tier jobs. You're not going to be the person that's going to land the top tier career. And so if you want to see the most success in your career, you have to be hungry, you have to be driven, and you have to be that, that passion oriented where you're learning outside of a job and you're wanting to succeed. And maybe that means getting a new job. Maybe that means getting a new career. Maybe that means finding a company that actually takes care of you where you have that upside potential because I get it, some companies are just crap, but there are some great companies out there that can pay you handsomely and give you the upside potential if you are willing to put in the work but you gotta be willing to put in that work. But I'm not gonna talk about that for the purposes of this video. I wanna focus on number C, or letter C, which can give you the most opportunity, which is doing something a little bit different, which will allow you to get to this wealth number significantly sooner than what you might expect. Now, what you gotta understand, when it comes to building this life-changing wealth, you gotta have money to do that. Now, there's two ways for you to get this money. You can slowly just keep chipping away at it, and every single time you get a paycheck, you put some money into your investment. That way, by the time you retire, you have this life-changing wealth. The alternative is you wanna fast track it. That way, now, instead of waiting until you're 65, you can do it when you're 35 or 45 or 55, depending on where you're starting today, where now in the next five or 10 years, you can get to where you wanna go. Now, I'm not saying this is gonna be easy, but it is possible, but it's gonna require you to change the way that you think about how you earn your money. Because the way most of us are bred to think is if you can go out and get a job, maybe you can get a job that's paying you $50,000 a year. Maybe if you can get a career change, you can get a job that's paying you $100,000 a year. And if you really climb up the corporate ladder, maybe you can get a job that's paying you say $200,000 a year because now you're entering the big leagues. But now if we flip the script a little bit, let's think about what the other potentials are because what if now you create a business, I'll talk about the different things that you can do in just a minute, but let's assume now that you can create a business where you sell something and you make $100 every time you sell this product. Now it's just a math game. If you can sell 10 of these a month, well now you're making $1,000 a month. But if you can sell 100 a month, well now you're making 10 grand a month. If you can sell 1,000 of these a month, well now you get the point. Now you can make 100 grand a month. 
which can really accelerate how much money you're making, which also means you can accelerate how much money you're putting aside into your investments. Because if we really talk about building wealth, now we're talking about putting money aside into your investments, whether it's stocks or real estate or whatever your other investments are, you're building these investments that way you can keep getting paid without you working in the business. Now, sure, of course, you can sell the business, but I'm not going to get too deep into that in this video. We're talking about now earning more money that we have our money to put aside into your investments. Now, you have the potential for essentially unlimited potential income. But the question is, how do you go about doing this? Because the reality is starting a business is not easy. Starting a business is not for everybody. There's a lot of crap on the internet. There's a lot of gurus selling you a whole bunch of crappy courses on the internet. How do you actually make real money as an entrepreneur? And the first thing is, well, one of the things you probably heard me talk about is why you should never blindly trust a random guy on YouTube. And what I mean by that here is if you're starting a business, you don't want to just blindly copy what somebody else is doing. Because if you really want to build a real business, I'm talking about a real business, not those crappy internet businesses that you keep hearing people talking about on the internet. A real business means you have to innovate and create something of value, something that's going to help solve somebody else's problem, something that's going to provide value to somebody else because now you're innovating and you're solving a problem. And if you can solve somebody's problem and get them to pay you $100, now the question is how can you scale that? That we can get 10 of those sales a month to 100 of those sales a month to 1,000 of those sales a month because if you can sell 1,000 of them a month, well, now you can get to your wealth number a whole lot faster. Because if you can live off of $5,000 a month and you're making 100 grand a month, that means now you have 95,000 extra dollars a month to put aside into your investments. Now you're gonna say, just but that is so unrealistic. How do you expect me to make a hundred thousand dollars a month? Do you understand that 90% of businesses fail? Do you understand that, that I get it? No one said it's gonna be easy. No one said it's gonna happen on your first go. It's gonna take a lot of hard work, it's gonna take some failures, it's gonna take some time, you're probably gonna lose some money at some point, you're probably gonna lose some sleep as well. But if you stick with it, you have the potential to see these types of opportunities. I know because I've been through that. But this is where now let's talk a little bit more in depth of how you can actually make this happen. If you want to build a successful business, there are two things that you need to make that happen. On one end, you need a product. And on the other end, you need customers who are gonna give you money for that product. You need both of these things if you wanna build a successful business. I mean, you can have the best product in the world that can solve everybody's problems, but if nobody knows about it, it doesn't do you any good. Likewise, if you have a whole bunch of people that wanna give you money, but you have nothing to sell them, that also doesn't do you any good as well. So if we start with here, how can you build a customer base? And the reason why I talk about this is because I've had a very unique kind of experience of learning how do you get customers. Uh, my first business was an event planning company. And it started off as a party promotion company where in college I was hosting parties. And the way that we would make money is people would come to my party and they would pay cover. They would pay an entry fee to get into the party. Now then, in order for me to get customers, I did word of mouth, meaning I purchased a whole bunch of flyers. I'd pay about $100 back then. I could, for $100, get 5,000 flyers. And then I would go out and distribute them. And then I would tell people who were popular in different campuses around my area to go out and distribute them in exchange for you distributing the flyers and trying to get people to come, I would let you come into the club for me. It cost me nothing to have you promote it, but then it would get people to come out. And in exchange, the product was the $10 or $20 entry fee that we would charge. This was a very manual labor trying to get people to hear about this product. Then after that, I got on the internet and I started a sock company. And when I started the sock company, the product was socks, which was sold online, which meant that we had more scalable potential because there's, there's not that capacity limit. Like if you go to a club, there's a limit of how many people can enter, how many people can buy socks. Well, there's really not that much of a limit or constraint of how many people can buy socks in a 24 hour period. I mean, yeah, sure. You're constrained based off of your manufacturing and whatnot, but that can all be solved. So there wasn't that much limit on the product side. Now the customer side, the way that I got customers here was through social media. It was through Instagram. I spent a lot of time. This was now we're talking about more than 10 years ago, around 10 years ago when Instagram was much more new, Instagram marketing was very unheard of. And so I would just go out and find 
anybody who was following a running page, a football page, a soccer page, an athletic page, and I would follow them from my sock company. Then you would get a notification saying that the sock company followed you. People didn't know what it was. And again, Instagram was very new back then. And the people started following my page. When people started following my page, I would tell them, hey, we have a new line dropping or we're launching our sock company. We're doing this thing. Enter your email here. That way you can be the first person to hear about it. Then we would take the Instagram traffic, funnel them into our email list, and then we would sell them our products from there. So it was a, again, content-based business, but we got people to hear about it through social media. So we had a product with the socks, we got customers through social media. Now it's something a little bit different where now I create videos like this, and then I have products, which is, well, Briefs Media, my company. One of our products is Market Briefs. It's a free financial newsletter. You've probably heard me talk about it if you watched any of my videos. But in Market Briefs, it's a free breakdown of what's happening in things like the economy, housing, stocks, crypto, and the global economy, and the way that we monetize that. So we get customers from one, my YouTube channel, but now we also grow the newsletter from referrals. We also grow the newsletter from advertisements. But then we make money on this newsletter by selling advertisements to advertisers, companies. And then we also have our own products, which are things like our premium newsletter, Market Briefs Pro, or our Briefs Pro bundle. We have an app now as well. So the way that we get customers all started though on YouTube, where I would create content, just like you're seeing here. And then I would say, hey, you wanna join Market Briefs? I got the link for you down in the description below, which by the way, it is down in the description. People would then sign up for Market Briefs. And that's how we kind of got the initial base of users on our product and then we use that as a way to then sell advertisements onto our newsletter and then also selling our paid products as well so there are an unlimited number of ways that you can get customers the traditional way that people would get customers is you would go out and spend a lot of money on advertising or you'd spend a lot of money on a storefront in a popular location now because of the internet you can flip that if you can create content, and yes, content is one of the best ways to get started. Even if you want to run paid advertisements, I can tell you that paid advertisements convert better if you focus in on the content that you create in the advertisement, because if your content sucks, you're going to spend a lot of money to get a customer. So you have to learn how to create content if you want to be able to scale your sales in this day and age. So now, how do you create customers? One of the best ways to get customers nowadays is through content, whether it's creating organic content through a blog, through your YouTube channel, through your podcast, through your Instagram page, through your TikTok, or whether you're creating content for paid advertisements. Content is one of the best ways to go about doing that. Now, of course, there are other ways as well. I mean, you could do cold outreach. You can call people. It depends on what your product actually is. Like when we sell advertisements, we do a lot of cold outreach to businesses to get them to want to advertise our newsletter and other products. But once you have the customers, you also need a product to sell them. And the mistake that I see a lot of people make here when it comes to coming up with that product is many times people want that blueprint of can you just tell me what to do? And then I do X, Y, and Z and I make some money. And if you do that, you're never going to build a real business because now what you're doing is you're just imitating somebody else. And if you're just imitating somebody else, you're just a copy of something that's already successful. And if somebody's already successful doing what you want to do, why would anybody want to buy from you when they can buy from the more successful company, from the more reputable company, from the more trustworthy company, from the more validated company? Why would they want to come and buy from you? And you might say, well, I'm going to lower my price and I'm going to offer a cheaper service. Well, now you're just dig in your own grave because you're cutting into your own margins, trying to beat somebody who is already better than you, who is making better profit margins than you, who has been around longer than you. And this is where if you really want to be able to create, this is where now you have to really invest some time into this product idea. But then the mistake that a lot of people make is they come up with a product idea and either they want to validate it, validate it, validate it, and never actually launch it because they're always trying to make sure that it's perfect or they just keep dumping money and dumping money and dumping money into the product. That way they pretty much bankrupt the business before they even get started because of how much you invest into the product. And in the entrepreneurship space, there is a term called the MVP. It's different than what you do in sports, but an MVP in the business world is a minimally viable product. And what that means is create the cheapest version of a product possible. The best way to go out and test to see if people like your product is to create a rough version and just launch it. Just get people to try to buy it. Just get people to try to use it and get some feedback because you can spend all the money in the world trying to create a perfect product. But then if you find out that your customers hate it, well, now all your money is already gone. 
go out and create and test first, and then have people give you the feedback, and then work to improve. You can always work to improve your product. In fact, you will be always improving your product, but until you actually test it, you're not gonna know what you need to get done. And this is where one of the things that I wanna remind you when it comes to your product, is you want to, if you really wanna build a scalable business, is you want to be able to think, how can you build something that you can step away from? So when I'm making YouTube videos, the problem here is, if I stop making YouTube videos, this channel dies. I mean, the reality is, this is not a business. My YouTube channel is not a business because I can't hire somebody to come take my spot. I mean, I, sure, I can hire somebody to make videos, but it's not gonna be the same because people come to this channel to watch me. How do I know that? Because I tried this before. I tried this on multiple occasions just to see how it would work. And what I realized is when people follow a person on the internet, they're following a person, not the brand, versus something like Market Briefs. So you don't know who's writing Market Briefs per se because we have a number of different writers. And so this is where now, if you wanna be able to build a real business and a real product, you wanna make sure that you have a business where you can step away and the business can continue running. And so this is where you wanna think about scale. How can you build a business that has the potential to scale and has the ability to continue driving revenue even if you're not working? In between some of my businesses, I got involved with real estate. And I got started first as a real estate salesperson and also a real estate wholesaler. But I had the same issue in the real estate space, which was I could make a lot of money but unless I was picking up the phone, calling buyers, calling sellers, trying to close deals, I wasn't getting paid. Now my checks were larger because your commission on a half a million dollar home can be larger, but you're not closing deals every single day, at least I wasn't. But unless you're putting in the work, you're not getting paid. And so this was fair for me. I wanted to build something scalable. And if you wanna be able to build a real business that can scale, you wanna think about how you can build something that you can potentially extract yourself from. Maybe not today, but at some point in the future, do you have the potential to be able to extract yourself because now you have the potential to build a real business. And now, as you start to do this, the key is you're making some money. You got your product, your customers giving you money to buy these products, you're making some money. Now the question is, what do you do with the money that you're making? You can either A, take the money, dump it back into the business, B, take the money, buy a new BMW, or C, take their money and buy stocks and real estate. And this can be a very tricky conversation because when you go and invest in stocks and real estate, you're getting a seven, eight, nine, 10% return on your money. When you go and buy a BMW, you finally can enjoy the fruits of your labor, all the effort that you put in the business. When you dump it back in the business, well, you can get a 20% return, a 200% return, or you could also go bankrupt. And so this is where, if you want to now figure out what to do with this money, you gotta take a look at where you are in your career, where you are in your business, and what is most important to you. One of the things that I do is when I pay myself a salary, I treat myself like an employee where I take the salary and that money, most of it gets invested. And then when I make a profit, some of the profit gets reinvested back into the business. Some of that comes to me. But this is where now you have to start thinking about as you start making this money in the business, what do you want to do with the cash? It's not that you can't buy a BMW. It's not that you can't invest it back in the business. It's not that you can't invest it in stocks or real estate. You can do all of them. Just what do you want to do first? And this is the cash flow management that can make or break entrepreneurs because especially with Instagram nowadays, you have a lot of people that will talk about, oh, I made a million dollars, which is why I got this Rolls Royce. I got the Ferrari. I got the Rolex. I got the big home and I'm flying on all these very nice planes going on these fancy vacations. So you're making a million dollars in the business. You're taking all million dollars out of the business and blowing it. You're killing the lifeblood of your business. You have no savings to protect you in case something happens wrong next month. You have no investments to protect you in case something happens to your business. And now you're just spending money so you can look rich on Instagram. And sure, you're making a lot of money today, but what happens if you don't make the same money tomorrow? The same financial principles apply to your business as to your personal finances, which is be smart with your money. Don't blow all of it. Have some savings cushion here. Reinvest some back into the business. Take some money out for you. You can take some of the money and invest it into other assets. Take some of the money and invest it or buy some other nice things with it as well. But you gotta know what is most important to you right now. And if you really wanna build a life-changing wealth and you wanna get this sooner, you're gonna have to make more money. And you have a few different ways that you can make that money. You can make that money from your job. You can make that money from a career change. Or you can make that money by investing into your own income. We're gonna create your own income, which can give you the most upside but it also comes with the most risk. But the key now is as you start to build that wealth, as you start to build that money, to take some of the money, 
buy other passive assets as well. That way you can keep recycling and just churning more wealth for you, your family, and your community. You can use OPM, other people's money. Use somebody else's dollars to then invest. That way now you can pay them back a little bit of interest and then you get to keep the profits. But when it doesn't work, that means now not only did you lose your money that you put into your investment, but now you still owe these people back their money plus interest. 